Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Opposition parties form alliance called India for 2024 elections. Pakistan army concerned over Afghan militant safe havens threatens response. And UN and US denounce attack on election candidate in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. More than two dozen Indian opposition parties said on Tuesday that they had joined hands to form an alliance called India to take on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP in elections next year. The decision was announced at the end of a two-day meeting of 26 parties in Bengaluru city. Malik Arjun Kharge, president of the main opposition Congress party, said India stood for Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance. Earlier in the day, PM Modi in a skating attack had termed the opposition huddle a corruption convention. He said for Danist political parties, mantra is family first, nation nothing. The opposition party said they have joined hands to fight systematic oppressions by the BJP, adding their alliance will present the nation an alternative political, social and economic agenda. Ladai, NDA or India ki beech mein hai. Narendra Modi ji or India ki beech mein hai. Unki vichar dhara or India ki beech mein hai. आप जानते हो जब भी कोई हिंदुस्तान के सामने खड़ा होता है इंडिया के सामने खड़ा होता है तो जीत किसकी होती है कहने की जरूरत भी नहीं है जब ये लोग कैमरे के सामने एक फ्रेम में आ जाते हैं तो पहला विचार देश के सामने क्या आता है पहला विचार देश के लोगों के मन में यही आता है पूरा फ्रेम देख करके देशवासी यही बोल उठता है लाखों करोड़ों रुपए का भ्रष्टाचार इसलिए देश की जनता कह रही है कि ये तो कट्टर भ्रष्टाचारी सम्मेलन हो रहा है कट्टर भ्रष्टाचारी सम्मेलन हो रहा है Meanwhile, in a counter to the opposition meet and show of strength, the BJP-led ruling NDA alliance also held a meeting in New Delhi. Although PM Modi remains popular and is widely expected to win a third term without much difficulty, the opposition parties are leaving no stones unturned as they believe a joint campaign and straight one-on-one -on -one constituency contest against the BJP can turn the tables. Well, in a major counter-terror operation, security forces on Tuesday neutralized four terrorists in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. Major warlike stores were recovered from the slain terrorists, which the army said were likely to be used in terrorist-initiated incidents in nearby regions. This was the second such operation in a span of two days. Early on Monday, security officials had foiled an infiltration bid by Pakistan-based terrorists near the LOC in Punch sector. India accuses Pakistan its terrorists to spread unrest in the Union territory. However, Islamabad denies the allegation. Moving on, two days after 12 of its soldiers were killed in two attacks, Pakistan's army has expressed concern that militants have found safe havens in neighboring Afghanistan and threatened to take an effective response. Referring to TTP, the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, the army said such attacks are intolerable. However, Afghanistan's Taliban administration has denied the accusations. Earlier, Pakistan's Defense Minister Khwaja Asif also blamed Afghanistan has failed to take action against militant groups or its soil. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller also said that Taliban has the responsibility to prevent Afghanistan from being used as a safe haven for terrorists. Pakistan has been witnessing a surge in attacks, especially by the TTP, since the Taliban's return to power in 2021. The TTP is not directly associated with Afghan Taliban, but pledges allegiance to it. And people across Pakistan are bracing for further rise in inflation as the government is expected to take more painful measures to meet IMF conditions after receiving a bailout. A report. 
The Pakistan Central Bank has received $1.2 billion from the IMF as the first tranche of a $3 billion bailout to stabilize the economy. But residents say they're not hopeful of any relief yet, with authorities failing to keep a check on prices. The crisis-hit country's annual consumer inflation has remained elevated at 29.4%. Locals in financial capital Karachi said they are fed up of government's failed policies which have only led to more burden rather than any relief. मैं नहीं समझती कि आम पब्लिक के लिए कुछ होगा यही लोग आएंगे यही लोग जाएंगे मुझे तो कोई उम्मीद नहीं किसी से प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ गवर्नमेंट व्हिच इज ड्यू टू फेस अ नेशनल इलेक्शन लेटर दिस ईयर हैज टू अंडरटेक मोर पेनफुल फिजिकल डिसिप्लिन मेजर्स टू सेटिस्फाई द आईएमएफ Moving on, after an attack on independent candidate for Bangladesh parliamentary by election, the United Nations on Tuesday raised concern over the election process in Bangladesh. Taking to Twitter, UN's resident coordinator in Bangladesh, Gwyn Lewis, said it is the fundamental human right of everyone to participate in elections without violence, and it should be guaranteed and protected by the state. The United States, which has been in loggerheads with PM Sheikh Hasina's administration, also asked Dhaka to investigate the incident impartially and hold perpetrators to account. Washington, on multiple occasions, has raised issue of free and fair election process in Bangladesh months before the South Asian nation goes to polling. It has also imposed visa curbs on Bangladeshi citizens who undermine the process in their home country, which many believe is aimed at current Sheikh Hasina's administration. I say that uh, this type of political violence has no place in democratic elections. We encourage the government of Bangladesh to uh, investigate any reports of violence thoroughly, transparently, and impartially, and to hold the perpetrators of violence to account. And I would say that, as we have said before, that we would expect the government of Bangladesh to hold free and fair elections, and we continue to monitor it closely. And hailing the Indian artworks and the historical contribution to the world, U.S. Ambassador to India Eric Garcetti on Monday said that the U.S. government is working to pave the way for returning more antiquities that need to be in India. The envoy's remarks come at a time when more than 105 trafficked antiquities spanning a period from the 2nd to 18th century are being repatriated to India. The envoy further said that people forget that Buddhism took part in India and it is a gift that has been given by India to the world. It comes at a moment when the U.S. and India have never been closer friends and this couldn't have happened without the participation of Indian museums, the national level, the state levels and contributions of individuals who said this is such a significant story, we want the world to know it. So I'm very excited to be here. I well, the Indian government has been making serious efforts to bring back stolen and illegal sold Indian antiquities from abroad. The United States has handed over a total of 278 cultural artifacts to India since 2016. And the flood situation in parts of India's Assam continues to be grim, with thousands affected as several villages are inundated due to overflowing Brahmaputra River, a report. Farmers in India's northeastern Assam say they have lost the majority of their crops to floods caused by overflowing Brahmaputra River after a second spell of monsoon rains hit the region. The flood waters have inundated several villages, affecting over 100,000 people across Assam. Farmers in Morigaon district said some crops had to be prematurely harvested while the remaining were submerged in the flood waters. So far, the deluge has also claimed at least eight lives in the state. Heavy monsoons are a yearly occurrence in Assam, resulting in flooding and landslides which force residents to flee their homes often leaving behind their belongings.
Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.